Have you ever watched those, uh, what is it called? Black Mirror, and there's an episode. There was one that was like, the girl was living her life. And then within like a couple of minutes later or 30 minutes, an hour later, that her life was a Netflix video. It's like, oh, we're talking right now. And then we go on Netflix in an hour and you see us oh! talking. <laughs> and yeah. you see like three people talking about everything that we said. Yeah. So it's like that. that I, be I was, I, I think that's the one that I started watching. Yeah. And then I was tripped the fuck out and then I got distracted or whatever. Yeah. But Salma uh, Hayek was, was, yeah. yep. That that I was yeah. watching that. Yeah. Why did you guys break up the second time or like that last time? Uh, the version that I got is from what she told me. It was like more or less of the same song and dance that she gave me the time before. Wow. <laughs> we we broke up a week after being engaged. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, a week after we got in. We, also on my birthday weekend. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. What the wait, fuck? Wait, wait, wait. I don't understand. I don't understand. Okay. <laughs> All right, so welcome to the episode of uh, the Coffee Breakup, starring Marvin Schultz and myself, Christian Vieira. Wow, yeah, the best podcast in the world. We have Sergio. Sergio Talks, I guess, is how this guy started off, right? This is how you popped off. Yeah, Sergio pretty much. Talks. I, I just kept the name. <laughs> okay. I like that. I like that. I like that. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. You you've been telling us a little bit about the podcast, how it kind of started, it and and kind of where you are now in terms of like the, the game that you're in and trying to get out of the podcasting, but you've been doing it for what, three, four years ago. This is your fourth year. Now, right? The podcast itself. It's only been a year. Yeah, only yeah, been a been year. Fresh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But fresh. your social media presence, I guess. Social media presence been, yeah, I'm, I'm in my fourth year now. Okay. Yeah. But then, uh, an, an opportunity came up. The, uh, my friend was contacted by this marketing agency that also have a podcast studio. And they're like, Hey, like, you know, if you guys want to use our studio, like come use it. Oh, cool. Shout us out and we'll do it like that. And at that point, like I had my platform and I wanted to see how else I could diversify. Ooh, yeah. I was like, okay, maybe we'll start the podcast. So at first I started with me and then my two other co-hosts, they came off the Love Island uh, TV show, but like the oh. Canadian version. Ah, yeah. So Fuck it. we, <laughs> yeah. So we started, we started that way. Just us, us three. They were like, they were only supposed to be like featuring, like every now and then. I was supposed to have guests like on a special, and whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like a guest. Yeah, one hundred. So this was gonna be you. This was gonna be me. This that's why it's still like under the Sergio Talks podcast umbrella. Interesting. Um. So like, like, uh, that's how it started. But then, like, moving forward, they became like a permanent part of the set, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and now because people got to love us and want to know more about us, there's only so much that you could kind of like show and talk about on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now we want to kind of go outside of that and maybe like allow people mm -hmm. into our life a little bit, you know, like maybe start doing like the whole vlogging and bigger, con uh, like bigger budget mm -hmm. content videos and stuff, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, like having a podcast is having a business. Yeah. So you yeah, have to, yeah. you have to be on top of it. You have to figure out like what's next, what else can we do, et cetera, et cetera. So it just makes sense for us to take the next step, which is to produce bigger kind of content. Beautiful. So before we continue, those who don't know you, mm. can you give us a background of who you are and how it is that you kind of created, I guess, this persona? Because for those of you who don't know, I found this guy. He was uh, recording selfies in his car. Not in the cringe. Well, actually, maybe some kind people of. would say cringe. Some, people, some, some people, people would like, call it that. Look at this fucking loser. I'm sure you had a bunch of comments and they're like, this fucking try hard motherfucker. <laughs> but... I think it was really relatable because especially in our kind of niche of relationships, like that's how I found you. And I'm like, damn, one day I would like to, you know, I was picking your brain, kind of getting mm -hmm. your information, kind of using that on the yeah. podcast, to be honest with you. Um, but you were really putting out a lot of content about breakups, mm -hmm. recovering, and, and kind of, you know, a, a little bit of, of that. So navigate us through kind of how that all started, I guess, a little bit of background on you and what's happening today. Yeah, I mean, that was not my last relationship. My relationship before that was coming out of a seven year relationship <laughs> yeah 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 um actually I, yeah no it was sorry it was it was it was a six year relationship at that time we got back together and then we broke up like a year after that but i had already started uh tick -tocking for that year so to speak once i started doing the TikToks, she came back ah <laughs> started yeah. blowing up like mm, yeah. Yeah. maybe i should go to that <laughs> you know what i mean so it was like it was um like that was like the kind of validation, right? That I I needed, so to speak, because it was after that breakup, and then we stayed together for a year, and then we, it broke up after that. Um, but that's how I kind of started. It was very like sad boy TikTok, you know, doing stuff like that, and people related to it a lot. You know, there was a lot of people that actually wasn't. I never, I could probably count on my fingers like the amount of times that I read like a hate comment. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. amazing, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, because we get some fucking comments all the time of some bullshit people. Yeah, but but it's like maybe th- about the message sometimes, but overall, like I think I would say overwhelmingly we get really good. Yeah, good good feedback from people. Yeah, hundred percent. But also the thing about podcasting too is that like you ha- you take like an hour and then you chop it into snippets, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, people are only going to judge you off of what you said in that one minute oh, without the other kind of context. I hate when they do that. You and know? it's like, oh, you should do talk about this? Bitch, we did. Watch the <laughs> video. Watch the video. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They're like, click the video and you'll find out. You know? Yeah, so 100%. For sure. Yeah, but, like, me, like, with the whole, like, selfie, like, dynamic, it was, like, 15 seconds long. And, yeah. like, there was no other context that you needed because like, everything was being said in that in that one moment, you know? Yeah. And it's very, like, they're open-ended quotes and stuff like that, right? So... It's left to like perception and whatnot. Right, right, right. So that's why it was. I don't think that there was a lot of hate because like I, I, I didn't really say anything that you could necessarily disagree to. So I also believe that you, you, you probably helped out a lot of people. I mean, were mm. you getting some feedback of people writing to you like, "Oh my god, hey, thanks." Yeah, well, that's how I, that's how I sustain like, as a, as a content creator. Because before, what happened is that, you know, as the content was blowing up, people were writing me into the DMs, right? <laughs> and then at first, it was like, yeah, fine. Like, I could answer to a, to a few of them, right? But, like, when it started getting, like, overwhelming, when it was, like, hundreds of DMs a day, then it's like, I was like, fuck, okay, this is too much. But I was like, I've always been, like, um, I always had, like, an entrepreneurial spirit. I always wanted to be a business owner in some way. So I was like, okay, like, how can I capitalize now? Because yeah. us in Canada, by the way, we make no money off of TikTok. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah there you, is no creator no... fund. Yeah, so I was getting all these, you know, millions of views, but without getting a paycheck. So I was like, okay, how can I utilize the following that I'm getting and make it into a business? Yeah. So I, I do what, I, what anybody does. I become a life coach. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, okay. But I told everybody straight up, like, anytime, like, anybody would book an appointment, I would always say, like, I'm not a certified life coach. Disclaimer, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I would have to, you know, because yeah, yeah. imagine, right? Yeah. So I would always say, st- I would always start off like that, and I didn't want to go that extra step and get certified because, again, I didn't want to turn it into, like, a job. Okay. You know? okay. So okay. what I did is that at first, uh, in that year, uh, like at the uh, during our breakup, I also had lost my job at the same time, uh, and so we have like unemployment insurance. So basically, I had a year where I could like look for another job and whatnot. But in that year, I was coming up to my one year mark. Right, I had like maybe like two months left to find a job or to figure something out. Right. And I was still doing all the TikTok stuff without making a penny. And at the end of it, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just come. I could cuss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so I was like, <clears throat> so I was like, fuck it. Let me let me see what I could do with it. And then I started uh, just taking people on like for appointments, but I was scratching for every single dollar. Like if somebody wanted to talk to me, like talk to me for an hour for five bucks, I was doing it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because it, it stacks up. You know, if I have ten people giving me five bucks, whatever, it could be like five bucks here, but it could go anywhere from like five bucks to like a hundred bucks. That's the grind, dude. But you, you know? also didn't work, so it's like you know, and you had time. I mean, it, realistically, exactly. you, you'll fuck anything. A hundred percent. And I was doing that, and then I was doing sem- uh, like webinars and whatnot. I was just trying to do like whatever I could. So I was trying to create like a community kind of like environment, right? Yeah. And my strategy was like selling straight to the consumer. I would go on TikTok Live and be like, Hey, if you guys want to learn more about breakups or how to like overcome your breakup. You guys could click the link in my bio. You guys can book a session or like participate to the webinar. And that's how I did it for about like a year and a half or so. And then merch came out and then like a whole bunch of things like encompassed it in that, you know. Look at this yeah. fucking guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty great, dude. Yeah. For all you fucking losers. Out there. <laughs> for all you people out there that are wondering, yo, how the fuck are we going to actually go out there and like try something or all these things where I'm worried about what they're going to say. It's like, who gives a fuck? No, no, we, just do it. Just fucking go out there and do it. Like to give you an idea, like numbers wise, like I think I was getting, I think it was, a thousand bucks every two weeks. So two th- like two grand a month. So that's twenty four. That's twenty four thousand dollars that I was doing off of EI. But this is Canadian dollars, right? This is Canadian okay. dollars, right? So this is like unemployment insurance, right? So this is what oh. I was. Ge- this is what I was making. So I so in that year I made twenty four thousand dollars, and the year after that it it, it jumped r- like straight into six figures. Yeah. Wow. But that's between like merch and webinars and life coaching. Cause then after that, like it, it attracted like a, like a bigger audience. And then I got like the, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, like people were starting to see me and like word of mouth. And then there was wealthier clients that would come on. Right. And to be willing to pay me for like, like a month straight or for the entire year. And sometimes I would, ju- I would just be on call. They'd be like, you, I need to talk to you. And I'd be like, okay, I got to hop on a call. Right, 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 right. Uh, but merch was also really, really, really big too. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a fundraiser too at one point and we had raised like $16,000, something like that. It's amazing, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. And we gave, we gave it away like for, for we had gotten like clothes, uh, gifts for kids and stuff like that. 
but it's the people, man. The people that the like the the people are are who like who make it happen. Who make, who it, make happen, it happen? That that fund us literally, and sure. also <laughs> just give us a reason to continue doing what we're doing. You know. Yeah. That's wow. amazing, dude. Yeah. Dude, it's I mean, it sounds like you're on the right track, you know? Like you obviously you monetize in a way where clearly you were in a bad position and it was kinda like you either figure this out or I'm screwed. Yeah. You know, you had like a deadline and sometimes under that pressure you fucking Yeah. You you make things happen, you yeah. know? So kudos to you. Thank you. So what happened to you, bro? What happened with your, your breakup that you said, you know what, I wanna start posting stuff? Um, it was me. I was, I was, I was not the, the ideal partner. I like, I'm, I'm realizing it more and more now, like, as I'm seeing like other content creators talk about it, like, um, let's say for example, like Andrew Tate or stuff like that. Like it's, it's, at one point I saw a video of him saying like, the reason why she left you is your fault. And then when I kind of like self-reflected, I was like, you know what? Like, like, so to speak. Yeah. Cause at that time, to some I, degree, right? Like, yeah. But also like at, at, for, to be honest, when I look back at it, like it's true because at that time I didn't have a lot going for myself. I was comfortable, you know. I wasn't taking care of myself necessarily mentally, physically, especially, uh, and things in that regard, right? So I was comfortable and I was I was settling also. Like the relationship also wasn't like the healthiest relationship either, right? But I was I was content, or at least I thought I was, right? So I settled for that, you know. Um, wh- who who initiated the breakup? Uh, she did. She did. I'm not I'm not the breakup type. Okay. You were yeah. just holding on. Yeah, I was holding on, and then you like you try to. He was like, comfortable. He didn't really find the need to break up. He was no, just like, oh, I'm, no. I'm cool. Yeah, and I had a job, and I also like, especially like in that relationship, the first four years I was working at Best Buy. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I I did like four years at Best Buy, one year like a credit rebuilding company, and then after that like they fired me, and then like everything started. So like it's kind of like all happened like fairly quick after that breakup. And what know? was the reason she broke up with you? Did she give you like an actual reason or? I don't think that she really knew like it just like the vibes changed it's like, not, oh, like this isn't doesn't feel this right. doesn't feel right yeah this like going. the thrill isn't there it's not what i want anymore like okay. i don't feel like i feel the same way about you and, and things in that regard right but that's what i'm saying like looking back at it like after like having like self-reflected in my mind looking back at like older version of me i get it i wouldn't want to be with myself either back then oh you know what i mean <laughs> you would have you would have broken up with yourself too. oh a thousand percent okay a thousand really? percent yeah like i'm a good guy like, don't get me wrong i was like super nice and stuff like that but like for me, at least as a person, as the kind of person that I want to be, like who I am now versus who I was before, I take this guy ten times fold. Sure, you know? sure, sure. So I, that's yeah. why I understand, like especially like like women now, like they want to have like a guy that has something going for himself. Right. You know what I mean? So if you don't have anything going for yourself, you, you feel like you shouldn't really be dating, or in that like well, in that case, that's kind of what happened. You didn't have anything yeah. going for yourself. She was like, "Yo, I'm out." Yeah. Right. That's pretty much it. But I don't think she knew that that's what it was. She didn't know. But no. if you were to ask her today, maybe she would. If she was honest with herself. She no, but yeah, may, yeah, may, yeah, but I, no, she probably just didn't know. Like she, I don't think she knew at all. She just felt like, yo, this, this, this isn't doing anything for me. Like, I don't really feel anything for you anymore. Yeah. When this guy was just not the guy who he wanted to be. He mm. was just happy. He was just chilling with who he was. Yeah. But it, again, you realize, like, but what am I really doing? Why, why would somebody want to be with me? But I'm also, nice. yeah. But if she if she wouldn't have left, you wouldn't be here. Ooh, so, think so? It's, uh, no, yeah, of course I wouldn't be here for sure. Really? I don't. I think mean, so. why? I think I think right. the why? Av- I think the average guy, the average guy, are like they're they're just willing to to settle. Like it's like if you if you if you're with a good girl, right, and the relationship is good, and you guys are going like the casual route, like you want like the white picket fence kind of fairy tale thing. Like, that to me is great. Like, you could do that. Don't get me wrong, right? But it, there's some, there's other men out there that want more for themselves, right? And some people are willing to put in the work and others are not, right? I mean, like, now if you look at it, like, uh, like the majority of guys, like, they're, they're, they're stuck at home still, you know, living with their parents, playing video games. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that I just feel like naturally you would want to be something, like, more. You'd want to distinguish yourself you know, because we're constantly in competition with one another, in like the realm of men. To a certain, uh, to a certain degree, yeah. Well, like we we always ha- like if you meet like a guy for the first time, there's always that like little bit of thought of like like is he better than me or or, or I'm better maybe than this guy. Maybe instinctual, like that's yeah. kind of part of us. A, okay, a small piece. A yeah, I, I I think when you meet someone else, you want to like measure where you're. You at. Size him up. Yeah. Okay. Even maybe subconsciously. Yeah. Yeah. You're Not like, oh, like this guy yeah. has this, so, so where do I yeah, land? Yeah. 
Okay. Can I be better? You yeah. Know? Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Am I good no. enough? Maybe right. you think. Exactly. So there's no there's no bad intentions, right? It's just like it, it it's just there for like a fraction of a second, and then you guys might be cool afterwards. You don't know, right? But I just feel like guys are always kind of like more or less sizing each other up in that regards, you know. Or also like we're also constantly comparing ourselves, are comparing ourselves to other men that are more like successful than we are and stuff in that regards, so that, right? Yeah, but I'm saying like that's a very like particular group of men that do that. Some guys don't give a fuck. Some guys don't they don't care about that. They're 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 cool with their with the lifestyle that they, with it, that they have, you know. But at least for me, from what I've understood, like th- the guys that are a little bit more like entrepreneurial, um, are a little bit more like. Um, uh, driven to want to become an entrepreneur they they have that extra like drive to want to be better than everybody else and like that's mm-hmm. where that competition comes in you know like especially like in the gym too like the guy that's bigger than you or you feel like you're smaller than everybody else right and that's why a lot of guys don't also want to go to the gym because <laughs> they feel like they don't have like the confidence to go in there to feel like they know what they're doing and stuff like that you know what yeah, i mean right, right. so that's what i'm just saying there's like that unspoken competition uh, competition amongst men um that's kind of always kind of been around. And I personally, I do have that, right? So I'm always trying to be like better than everybody else. Okay. But not from like an ill intent perspective, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like you, you want to make sure, I feel like, not that you want to be better than everybody else, but you just want to make sure that, I think that you can just hang with just about anybody. In a sense, like, okay, you know what? I could be the nicest person to the guy who's got nobody, yeah. but I still want to be able to hang out with the guy who's got the private jet and still kind of like, vibe with that motherfucker yeah and that's true i just think like for 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 me just because like i have like like a like a sports background i've always been into sports and whatnot so like that competitive side of me is always i'll say i want to be better than everybody else but that's only just so i could get like the right amount of drive to perform good okay you know what i'm saying yeah if i don't if if i don't become better than them like i'm totally cool with that it's just like the kind of mindset Something that to strive for. Yeah, exactly. But where did that come from? Because Dream. when you were with your previous in your previous relationship, you didn't have that drive. Andrew Tate, hey, baby, no, which is part <laughs> of the maybe, reason. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Which is part of the reason why things didn't work out. So yeah. that drive wasn't there at the time. So you fi- maybe you feel like because things didn't work out and she left you. Yeah. Is that something where maybe that's stemming from? Yeah. Because you feel like, man, I wasn't good enough to her. Now I got to prove that I, to everybody else that I am good enough. Oh. Right. Could that well, be it? Well, think about it this way. Let's say, I mean, we've all gone through breakups, right? Yeah. So, like, you go through a breakup, <laughs> you see her with someone else, and then you ask, like, what does he have that I don't? And you start comparing yourself to that guy, right? Yeah, sure. So, so yeah, to speak. I can see that. Right? I can see that. I mean, in most cases, they downgrade, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like that. With us, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, in hindsight, like, you, you still question, like, what does he of have? Course. Like, why did he go after him and not me and stuff like that? So, like, that gives you a little bit of fire. And then after that, like, I always had, like, that that desire to want to become a better version of myself. Like, even when I was working at Best Buy. But, like, I just didn't, like, I didn't have, like, the know-how. I didn't have, like, the resources or the knowledge to figure out how can I do that, you know? And honestly, the first step that I did, aside from, like, the whole content creation thing, was going to the gym. Okay. That, that, was, was, a- that was a huge stepping stone from, like, a, like a, from a confidence perspective, like, looking good, feeling good, performing of good. Course. And, like... People see that and they, they give you like they give you the validation by saying like oh like you like your body's changing you know, so like a lot of things in that regard is kind of like kind of gradually puts you into like the path of wanting to like constantly want to self improve and that's yeah. kind of what set me off to like always be that kind of hungry. I think the gym is a very powerful tool for a lot of people because man, I mean we we talk about it it almost like stems away from like the the original niche but dude there's just so much related to mm. relationships and your health like overall with what you do with your body because dude look when you go to the gym it teaches you discipline if you want to see results right did you that you got to go there you got to yeah, show up sure. okay? you got to put in the work it's not only there there's a lot of other factors that you have to put a line in order for that to work what is that nutrition mm. kind of saying no to certain things oh we're going to be going out tonight ah, that's mm. gonna fuck me over i don't want that yeah. shit and then over time you start seeing the results mm. now it teaches you patience You know, Mm -hmm. all these things are tied of just being an overall better human being that if you learn all these things, when you then get into a relationship, now everything starts to come like fall into place. Okay. It teaches you how to be patient with your partner. It teaches you how to be disciplined to do the right things for your partner. And I think overall, it just helps not only the relationship with your partner, but the relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because then you learn so much about yourself and what you're capable of doing. You then start seeing the change and you're like, man, if I apply going to the gym and seeing like my health change and how everything else is affected by it, what if I did that towards a business? What yeah. if I actually did that towards my relationship? Mm-hmm. Like actually putting effort. And I feel like that's where we kind of get a disconnect because we talk about health and fitness and how important it is for it to be like overall as a human being better. And then 
Like, oh, yeah, but then your relationship's like, I want to talk about a relationship. It's like, dude, like, what about yours? The mm. relationship with yourself, dude? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. take care of you first. How do you, how you expect to then worry about somebody else when you're not even taking care of yourself? Which I think is probably what happened with you, where you weren't even taking care of yourself. And then your girl's probably like, I mean, it's not, he's not a bad guy, but, but not doing anything. This is really what I want from my life. Right. Mm. Type shit. You know? Right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I remember coming out of that breakup, I think I was like 210, 220. How much you Jesus. You're a tall guy too. You're tall, yeah, man. yeah. But now I'm like 190. Not, oh wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice, um, dude. But like at the time, like I, 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 I cut super fast. Like my boys, they, they know because they, they sell the results. I think, I think maybe three, four months in, I'd lost like, like 10, 15 pounds. Like, like hot out the gate. You know. Yeah. It's usually, what happens? So you go to a break. Guns up blazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How long have you guys been in a relationship for? I've been I think this we're around the same like time no, Well okay 12 years <laughs> No bullshit, bullshit I've known my girl Since kindergarten So we're both I'm 31 You're turning 31 um, In March Next you're month You're turning 31 Okay oh, yeah. So I'm 31 I've known her since I was like well Three or four years old I guess five years old In kindergarten Whatever <laughs> the fuck it was um, She was my kindergarten crush uh, so you were risen already back well, in the kindergarten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she sat next to me. Actually. She doesn't remember. She, she's like, I don't know who the fuck you were, but I remembered because she was my crush. Yeah. I sat right next to her, whatever. She ended up moving um, to another state uh, for her dad for work, whatever. And then we rekindled a little bit in college where I saw her and I'm like, fuck out of here. Whatever. We were talking there in college. It didn't work out at college. Mm -hmm. uh, we were both in uh, Greek life. So I was in a fraternity doing my thing. She was in a sorority. I wasn't doing a lot of bad things, but she probably wasn't doing the best things. Right. And so we kind of went our separate ways. And then we rekindled um, three years ago. Yeah. Three years, years ago. Maybe our anniversary, our, our two official two year anniversary was um, on the 22nd of, of February. Oh, sure. But we were dating kind of for a year prior to that. Um, we started off like, oh, she just got out of, out of a relationship. Let me, you know, I don't want to jump into something because mm -hmm. I've been down that road where yeah, it's like yeah, someone yeah. gets out of a relationship and they're giving you a bunch of like, oh my God, I'm single now. Like, yeah, let's talk. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, shit, okay. You jump, you start talking to them and then they're like, oh, by the way, I'm going to go back to my ex. And you're like, uh -huh. fuck. So I'm like, you know what? Let me take it slow. About like around the end of the year, I'm like, okay, I think this is, this is this for real. Is, yeah. And then that's when I'm like, man, okay, I want to ask her out, but I, I want to make sure I can remember the day. So then I got, I, I asked her out on, um, February 22nd, 2022. So two, 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 two. Wow. Can't yeah, I can't forget. So that's kind of why I waited. But anyways, yeah, so for since then, it's been like two official years, yeah. three we've been dating. You have been with your We're girlfriend. about to make officially three years coming up in May. But we met like during COVID of 2020, like yeah. in the summer. But, you know, it was COVID. Like yeah, things yeah. were just kind of weird. So officially, we we're about to make three years yeah. in, um, in May. I do want to ask you and, and also to challenge you because you had said that it, – it, when you realized that you needed to make a change, it was when you guys broke up. Because when you were in the relationship, you didn't, it, yeah, you were, there wasn't any drive I wasn't aware to, about it. Okay. Do you feel like in your relationship that you, it motivates you to continue striving? Or do you think that's just, just you as Marvin? So like, Do you have a purpose with your group? I think that's a great, great conversation to start because I feel like I've never been more driven. Like mm. where I am, like now, like this year, like a few past few couple of months, like you you, yes. there's something different about you. I, I am, com I'm so really? driven with with work. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Same. T I'm also very proud of you. We'll also something it. different. I'm yeah, proud, well, about, yeah, I'm I'm proud about you guys. Hey, I'm proud of you too, dog. I'm proud of you So yeah, so um, I I can see how a lot of guys, and I want to piggyback off of that in a little bit. Yeah. But a lot of guys do become very complacent when they come in a relationship. They become comfortable. Like, oh, this girl, she's great. She's a good girl. Maybe not the girl of my dreams, but I'll, she's a good girl. I'll mm -hmm. stay with her. And then they'll, whatever they do or do not do is just within the comforts of that relationship. Yeah. I don't feel this way. I feel like I have a lot of goals, but not just for myself, but also for, for with, because of her. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we want to have a house. We want to have kids. And it's like, to me, I wake, every, wake up every day with the purpose of how can I make our life better. Like, what can right. I do to elevate myself? But also, sometimes I got to take a step back and, and, and enjoy the moment where we are today because it's easy to get caught up in that. Like, oh, I want to make this amount of money. I want to pay this off. And then I want to do this. But it's like, then you reach that and then it's like the next goal. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to take a step back and appreciate where you are in that life because there's a, there was a day in time where you prayed for to have what you have today. We've talked about that wow. too. It's like now we got a podcast studio. I remember we recorded in a fucking <laughs> warehouse. And then now we have this and we're like, oh, fuck, we wish we had more followers or we had this, this, this. Yeah. But it's like there's a, there was a time where we prayed for this room and now we have it. So now we got to be grateful for it. But to go back to your initial question is like, you like that, huh? To go back to your oh, original wow. question is, <laughs> dude, I, I my girlfriend pushes me to be a better, per, better man, mm. you know, to provide... Ooh. 
the life that she deserves. So when I hear her wake up in the morning, sometimes like 5 a.m. to go to work, I'm like, fuck, I got to work harder. So one day she doesn't have to wake up at 5 a.m. to go to work. And so I'm I'm not complacent. I'm not comfortable. If anything, she pushes me to do better. Wow, know? shout out to Marvin's girlfriend. Yeah. Shout yeah, out to yeah, my yeah. girl. I love you, baby. <laughs> but now, but now, let's now use that. Do you think that your girl, was she kind of allowing you to be or motivating you to be that better person? Ooh. Um, well, no I th- disrespect to her. No, no, not at all. But maybe there was a dynamic that you felt like, you know what? I don't really give a fuck enough. Like, this is cool. She's not really pushing me for more. So I guess this is, you know. Well, I think two things. I think one, like, after hearing you guys talk and, like, thinking back to mine, I also think, like, if I were to get into a relationship now, I would definitely have, like, the same, like, mindset that you just spoke about. But back then, like, I was younger, too. Like, I got into a relationship with her when I was 21. Right. Okay. So yeah, you guys got into a relationship roughly around like twenty seven. Twenty, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, in that regards. Yeah. So like, if I were to get into a relationship now, it's 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 much more different. Like, I have the discipline. I, I would most likely want to have a partner too. That's like that like motivates me as well. At that time, it was different. Like we were young. We were still kind of trying to figure out life yeah. in a way. Yeah. So I was I was kind of like lost in that regards, and she was lost too. So two lost people together. It's kind <laughs> of hard to try to find your way out of it. You know. So yeah. So like instinctively i wanted to be that guy to like plan for the future and this that and a third but then again like when it's only like one-sided when only one person's kind of like taking initiative to figure out like what we should do with our life it's hard to like consistently stay motivated or focused or disciplined you know what i mean yeah Uh, so i think it's just like the the, the dynamic in which we started our relationship in and how it progressed is very different to how i perceive what my next relationship is going to be like but what about, but then you guys reattempted. Did yeah. anything really change from that year of you posting and, and that reattempt? Yeah, that, that year really did change because when we got together that year, at the beginning of that relationship, I told her, I said, like, listen, I've done a lot of work on myself. I'm telling you right now, like, I'm good with or without you. So, like, figure out your shit. If this is what you want, like, we'll give it a go. But, like, I'm letting you know now, like, I'm good with or without you. So, like, I'm not, I'm not here to play games. And then when we broke up, I repeated to her a year later the exact same words. I'm like, is it, are you sure this is what you want to do? Because I'm good with or without you, you know. Uh, yeah, and and I and I stuck and I, you know, uh, you know, I stuck with it. And then after that, I could I continued to pursue whatever I had going on. Like I still was doing the TikTok. I was still going into the gym. If anything, like it gave me like a little bit more of a boost. But like I stayed on my grind. I stayed on my path. And like there was there was no going back from that. So then, why did you guys break up the second time, or like that last time? I guess. Um, so the the version that I got. <laughs> was it, <laughs> the version that I got is from what she told me. It was like more or less of the same song and dance that she gave me the time before. Oh boy! Like she, like she, she was. Oh wait. Also, side note: this was a, this was <laughs> we, we we broke up a week after being engaged. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, a week after we got in. We uh, also on my birthday weekend. <gasps> <laughs> wait, 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 I don't understand, I don't understand, okay, okay, so you guys break up, you guys get back together, yeah, it's for a year, yeah, you propose, I propose at the end of that year, so I propose in, in uh, end of April, my birthday is beginning in May, okay, uh, so wait, what, so I don't, I don't understand, what, where's the relationship, even good or did you say oh, i think a ring will fix this no that's the thing the relationship <laughs> wasn't like it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't bad like the relationship was good and also like like we were planning also moving down to miami right and like we were having plans in that regards and like she didn't have like anything to like officialize like the the commitment of the relationship so i was like you know what i'll get the ring uh, you know, okay okay, you know okay. What I mean? make it <laughs> official make it, but also but also in hindsight it's also been like six years that we're together you know oh, like right, she's right, from like right. a greek background like you know it's like where's where's my where's my goddamn ring okay you know okay, okay. Uh, so there's a lot of things that led up to that decision like um but then yeah i proposed so <laughs> people will be able to like decipher like what might have happened but so we proposed. She had already planned like a trip with her girls to go <gasps> to yeah to Wait. go. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? She went to Costa Rica. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Costa Rica, not that bad. Uh, um, but like, I, I I was cool with it, you know. Like I, I like I didn't care about like girls trips and stuff like that and whatnot. So like when she told me she was gonna go do that, <laughs> she had that planned. At the time, I was cool with it. <laughs> Lesson I learned. Learned. I learned, I learned. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, which and then she and like I was preparing to like do like this whole like you know like celebrating our engagement, right? I was planning like like a trip to go on together and whatnot. And uh, TikTok was going good and everything was going good, so it was on me, right? So 
I, I was planning that. And like when I was like hinting her like, hey, like we had this trip going on. I saw like her energy like kind of like change while she was away, you know. And then she, she comes back. We have a little bit of a scrap and then she leaves. She 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 goes to like a, like a friend's house or whatever, right? And on her way to that friend's house, yeah, we're on the phone and it, it kind of comes to terms that like we're we're, we're breaking up, right? And I was kind of pressing her too because I'm like, yo, this just sounds like the same yeah. song and dance that song you gave me dance, last yeah. time. And on that same co- phone call, I told her the same words. Like I told you, like at the beginning of the year, I'm I good with you. or without you, you know. So figure it out, you know. Uh, and yeah, we stuck we stuck uh, to the decision of of breaking up, and then. Like I said, that's the version of the story that I got. Did something happen when she was gone? That's the, the guy, he doesn't know because that's as much as he knows. I don't know. That's you, have a, you, <laughs> have a, you have a you have a, an opinion on, on it? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I've like I've I've heard like all, ki- but like the thing is like once like the truth <laughs> actually came out, it was like I, I'm so far gone from this. Like yeah, it doesn't yeah, even yeah, phase yeah. me no okay, more. Okay, you know, okay. whatever happened happened. Yeah, I, and I, I already created like the worst case scenarios in my mind. And that just helped me go through the breakup yeah, that much faster. You had to mentally prepare yourself for yeah, for yeah. and exactly. also nothing that happened had anything to do with you and everything to do with her. Really, realistically, whatever she did. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's on her. Yeah. Uh, did you get the ring back? Yeah, hundred okay, percent. Okay, yeah, 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 she yeah. gave it to you. Like we really? met up when she came back. Yeah, when she came back, we like we met up and I'm like respectfully like, we were engaged for like a week. You still have <laughs> it or you got rid of it? Uh, I actually still have it. You save it for the next girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't got to know. She ain't gotta know. Uh, cut this uh. off. <laughs> <laughs> no no yeah maybe damn uh, <laughs> dude so um if your next girl were to be like hey i'm going on a girl's trip <laughs> you gotta <laughs> <laughs> so which one which trip are you going on <laughs> i think the ptsd is still definitely gonna yeah. be it for sure you know <laughs> shit dude the guy's gonna, you guys seen the the show um you on netflix yeah no g- no bro what <laughs> you haven't I mean, watched maybe they don't have it in canada bro who knows <laughs> but i feel like you're gonna be that guy where it's like yeah i'm gonna go on a trip here and then he's gonna show up like hiding in the back corner like <laughs> yeah. in the plane yeah. with a mask on like i don't know don't <laughs> look at me <laughs> with the mask <laughs> yeah. i don't know like listen i like to, to each their own right like i'd much rather be like let's go on a trip together or like i should be able to like like vibe with your friends enough that like we could all kind of like travel together. So it's like a girl strip and he's like, <laughs> let me come with you guys. I'm in the, I'm in the Put corner. on a wig. No, that's, what, that's what my girl said. Remember when we were planning a guy's trip? She's like, <laughs> so, so we were like, oh, like Marvin and I want to do like a guy's trip. Maybe like one or two other guys that come with us, sure. whatever. And she's, she, she was very limited on the amount of locations we can go on. And I don't think it was more like, I don't trust you in those locations. She says, oh, it's because I want to go too. Because mm. I haven't been to a lot of these locations. Um, but yeah, it's almost like it's a it's a it's a guy's trip. Yeah, yeah. For the boys. Yeah. Let the guys go. But now, based on this, do you think that you would let any other girl in the future? Yeah. yeah. The only reason why I say that, like, I understand like what like what people's opinions are on the internet about that. But at the end of the day, like, she still has her life to live. And like, if at the end of the day, if I'm with a girl that's like is that I think is going to be, like, promiscuous when she goes on girls' trips, mm-hmm. why would I even want to be in a relationship with her in the first man. place? This is what yeah. a healed person sounds like. But I also, this is a little, little side note, I also feel like there's certain, some trips are more reserved for people who are single. So if I'm in a relationship, I don't think I would want to maybe go to Vegas, right? Where or You're not going to Colombia, that's for or sure. Or uh, Colombia. I'm not going to go to Medellin because... <laughs> The scene there yeah, is, the, uh, yeah, all you got to say. <laughs> so I feel like there's a place and a time for everything. Same like strip clubs. I feel like yeah. not really the best place. Or to like party. if you're with your, with your girl and she goes, on oh, I'm doing a girl's trip to Miami. Probably, also, yep. Probably not. Especially, we live in Miami, but if you majority. No, but the, who, the people yeah. who come down here don't come to Hialeah. Yeah. They go to South Beach and yeah, bring go, go, go fucking exactly. party and shit. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like there are certain stipulations. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, if you want to go backpacking with your fucking boys somewhere in, I don't know, fucking Sweden. I feel like that's fucking fine. I don't 100%. think there's a big deal. You know, it's funny because um, at, at my job yesterday, I was talking to one of uh, one of my coworkers. So he's he's getting married later on this year. He's he's going this weekend to uh, his bachelor uh, party. Okay. They're doing a trip to Costa Rica. Ironically. <laughs> but he's telling me like, oh, like we're going to go backpacking. We're going to go hiking. We have like all these things that we're going to be doing. So I don't know. It just seems like very, very different, I guess. <laughs> You know what guys do? Yeah. Well, and then again, so guys, they probably go on trips too and they probably be doing some wild shit also. Of course, yeah. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's what you said. I think it all depends on who who is it that I'm dating, right? Like, do I know this person that I'm dating? Because if you're going to be with someone that then you're like, no, I don't want you going here or no, you can't do this or you're too, you're too much of this, it's almost like, man, well, maybe 
Mm -hmm. It's not about them not going on the trip or them not doing that. It's like, why are you, you shouldn't even be with that person if you don't even agree with what it is that they want to do. For sure. And I remember, like, not the relationship that we've been talking about, but the last, the the recent one that I had. One of the moments that I I actually, like, genuinely fell in love, uh, fell in love with this person is because I remember what time she was on a trip. I forgot where she was, but regardless, uh, she was with her girls, right? And we weren't necessarily official yet either. We were still, like, talking, but we were were exclusive. Like, Mm -hmm. we knew where it was going. And she was on this trip with her girls. And at one point, I remember, like, she, we were FaceTiming each other. And I'm like, like, where are your friends at? Like, you seem to, like, to be alone and whatnot. And she's like, yeah, they went on a yacht. And then I was like, why? Okay. So I was like, why didn't you go with them? And she's like, oh, like, I don't feel the need to have to go on, like, have to go on the yacht. Interesting. So, like, that to me, that I was like, damn. I damn. Like, like, that to me, I was like, you know, that's a keeper. And not that I would have had a problem with it. But, like, especially, like, when, like, she's trying to somewhat sell herself to me, like, to... to like to make sure that like we'll get into a relationship she was kind of letting me know like this is the kind of energy that like that i'm coming with you know like mm. i'm not i'm not going to be the type to like go on yachts and like hang out with all these guys but also like i also like respect my relationship enough to not even like want to do it like yeah, I'm, she's yeah. she's good she's somebody like she's super good on her own yeah you know um but like it, to me at that time it was like unheard of like i never heard like of a girl Speak or no act to a yacht. Yeah, yeah, yeah. speak and right. act in that way, you know. And keep in mind, like, she's the type of person that loves to do these things, you know, especially when single. And she's not a promiscuous person. It's not like she was doing like shit when she was going on other yachts. It's just like the thrill of being on a yacht, you're in Miami, whatever. It's fun, you're with sure, your girls yeah. and whatever, right? But for to, to know the kind of personality she has and still decide to be like, I'd rather not go on the yacht because I don't feel the need to, that to me was like top tier. They exist. You, you're still seeing that person, or no, no, no. Oh, okay. We broke off maybe uh, I think what, like five, five, six months ago. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Now you go in the store. She's on a yacht somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <I'm fuck. laughs> no, no. Uh, no, no. I'm me, me. I'm cutthroat with my relationships. Like me, like I'll I'll either mute or unfollow depending yeah, yeah, on how yeah. it ended. Like I, I, I'm like that. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I'll once I know you. once I know like we're done. Like, I just need to, like, hear you utter the words, like, it's over for good, and, like, there's no going back, and then I'm good. Damn, interesting. Yeah. yeah sometimes you got to do it. Um, I wanted to, I had one question, and I'd and love to hear your opinion on it as well. Because earlier you had said, we, we talked about, got, you had mentioned something that I think is really interesting. You said guys are more comfortable than women, especially when they're in long-term relationships. Do you feel like, because obviously when you, when it comes to marriage, the majority of divorces are, are initiated by women. Mm-hmm. So a lot of guys are like, oh, this is why I'm not going to get married. You know, women, they're going to leave you anyways. But I personally feel like women, they initiate divorces at a higher rate because they're first to say, I'm fed up. I, I This is not working for me. Meanwhile, the guy w- who is probably also fed up, but he's comfortable, he's complacent. He's not going to walk out of the relationship because he's like, oh, she's okay. She's not great, but... Mm-hmm. I'm already too comfortable. I don't want to start over with somebody else. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. So they might not be happy, but they're less likely to leave a relationship yeah. or a marriage because the woman will say, "You know what? Enough is enough." Do you agree with that assessment that I'm kind of? Yeah. Bringing to um, you? The thing that I've come to realize now is that you know women are making their own money, right? So there's a lot less that's like forcing them to have to stay in relationships, right? Like, like by all means, if the guy was the only breadwinner and like they were to like separate or divorce, the girl respectfully would have nothing to her name. Mm-hmm. But now like they do, right? They, like, and this is not too long ago. Like we're talking within like the last hundred years, sure, yeah, you know, give sure. or take, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More or less. So like now that sure. the, like they're being more and more independent, making their own money, why would you want to stay with a guy that's just being average, so to speak, right, right. or is doing the same as you when, you, you know, you're like... Like the girls are on their grind now. Like sure, they have sure. money. Like if they if they if they leave the relationship, like they're still okay, like f- financially, right? Yeah. Um. And I think guys they become like complacent and they kind of just like chill because they feel like oh like I got my girl now it's official like she's not gonna leave. She me. ain't gonna leave or whatever even though exactly this isn't the best. Relationship. And also to add to that, I feel that for a lot of men now, like we we're not like raised the same way as we used to be raised like like back then either. Like before, like we were kind of like. It was like the patriarchy, right? Like the, like the father was like passing down the information on how to be a, like a better man and how you should treat a woman, stuff like that. I feel like it's kind of gotten like lost through time, more or less. So I feel like that like that dynamic is lacking too, right? I don't f- like. It might be like a <coughs> like a unpopular opinion. I just don't feel that for the average guy now we're stepping into the the roles that we instinctively have. To want to lead, to want to provide, to want to protect. I'm talking about average. I'm not talking about, <clears throat> sorry. I'm not talking about us. I'm not talking about entrepreneurs. I'm not talking about people that are above average. Like Driven. Yeah, when we're talking about average, 
<clears throat> sorry, when we're talking about average. We're taking like like the majority of men, right? Right. And like you see them like when you when you walk down the street or whatever, right? Like I'm talking about I'm talking about those guys. Um, and I think they become complacent where like the the rest of the guys are wanting to be the ones who are able to like, to protect and provide and to and to do the all these kind of things. So there's kind of like a like a a dynamic shift that I feel like has been happening with the last few years. You okay. know, like girls are on the, like on their come up, they're on their grind, they want it to be independent. And I feel like guys are kind of like on the back burner a little bit. They don't have like the, the drive that they, they they used to have like yeah, mm, like years ago. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's why I think it, it gets initiated because it's like. The woman's like, dude, I already make my own money. I don't need you, especially if you're not bringing anything to this relationship. One hundred percent. I mean, respect. Like, I don't, I don't know what your guys' opinion, are, uh, what your opinion is, but I feel like women like to look up to their partner, and not not to say that they're below them, more inferior in any regard, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they like to want to like learn from them, right? Mm -hmm. And like, okay, yeah. they, they like someone that's able to like, take, teach them things, right, to to a certain degree and whatnot, you know. But I, uh, I'm sorry. Go no, on. no. But I was just gonna say, and I just feel like that's kind of what like men are like not capable to do anymore because like if you look at a guy now sometimes they can't even put, like they can't even hang up like a like a picture frame on the wall or they can't like yeah. you know like like and that's kind of like like the, the basics and what we're taught like right you know to to feel like we shouldn't know as a man <laughs> but like right, right, it's, right. it's changed obviously through time you think women like to admire their their significant other i mean who wouldn't you know right. it's like why like I don't know. I feel like when you like, like even in your, in your situation, like you, you know, she pushes you. Like it, you have that drive within you. Yeah. And she gives you that like that additional one, right? So I feel like it's this, it's the same thing for women when they look to their man. Like you, you kind of want to like have that like bouncing the back and forth of like wanting to grind and to succeed. True, true, yeah, true. Exactly. And, and you, as a man, you want your woman to be proud of you. Like I want my partner to be like that. That's my man. Yeah. And he he could he could do these things for me. You know, provide not emotion, not just financially, but also emotionally. Physically and be there and be like, yo, that's my man. Yeah. I can kind of see that. But, but now yeah. we talk a lot about average men, right? But let's talk about now the state of the current average woman mm -hmm. who they, you know, it's like, what do you want at this point? You yeah. know, because there was a certain time where, yes, a woman would look up to a man for almost everything because, you know, men are, I guess they would have more of those resources or they would kind of be put in positions that they had to accomplish more things while women, I guess, were just looking up to them. But now we have this wave of, I don't want to say modern feminism, but it's almost like, okay, well, you're grinding. You want to get your own job. You're, you're making your own money. Um, and, and, and to a certain degree, I almost feel like with this whole, like, for years, women didn't have the same opportunities, <laughs> and now we're kind of pushing them up to these opportunities. Where now I honestly, I honestly feel like men are not downgrading, but they're almost like, they're stumped a little bit. I mean, I, I think there was a, there was a, uh, a statistic that I think more women are now graduating from college. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I think now more women are even owning homes now. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like we've we've put them up on, not this pedestal, but on this position to, to succeed at a much faster rate than men. Where it's almost like, what do you want now? Because you're you're already accomplishing your own money. Now, now there's like this level of time that we're taking away from you for to, for you to have an established relationship or for you to even have children. So, like, where is the balance? And I feel like now with that modern woman, it's like, what do we do now? Mm -hmm. Because in order for you to look up to somebody else, it's like, well, if you're already making X amount of money, does then the guy that you need to be with have to be making more? Like, what what, what has to give at that point? I think that's my, my current concern with, like, modern feminization. I don't know what you guys think about that. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I, think, I think women absolutely had a right to be able to get pushed into the, the, the playing field because for hundreds of years kind of like the man's man's world right kind of man mm -hmm. they created they established they made laws they made rules they they ruled so now for let's say for the past 60 70 years even a little bit less women have been able to have their own bank account have their own money get their own career so now it's like you compare 50 years to 500 years so it's like you can say well it's not really even anymore i'm like right is it like because i feel like we, it's just we're just now getting into the direction of making it making it fair mm -hmm. but yeah obviously are a woman outpacing men in a lot of these categories that you mentioned sure for sure but i think it's just a lot of men you said it it's just complacent you know men really aren't really men anymore and it's like it's not a woman's fault you know if, if they're outpacing you it's only one person to i don't want to say blame but 
you gotta work harder yeah. you know so i get what you're saying where it's like a lot of women they want their cake and eat it too where they want to have the career they want to make their money but then they want the guy to pay for everything or they want the guy to do this like it's like they want their own money and then they want to use the I, guy's money and I, they're like fuck what what's the, fuck? the solution right is what i'm saying in that situation because to your point i get it like oh yeah men should strive for more they should grind they should be able to put a picture frame up on the wall i get yeah. that but to the woman who already puts the picture frame up on the wall and yeah. is already making the money and she's already there uh, Where who, who who do you date at that point? You know, like the, the pool is very different at that state. So then how yeah. do you please a woman like that when she's got all the things that the man should be able to do? Um there there was this there, there was this thing that I that I had come across and w- what I took from that is basically we're not men are not being raised the way that they used to be back then, right? Where it's kind of like like the people that the kids are looking up to now are like your streamers. They're like your YouTube content mm, creators. They're people true. that are there showing yeah. you that you could make it by playing video games, right? <laughs> true, and true, true. and and I- even if you by like even I know some of them personally. Like they're not like they're some of them like socially awkward. Some of them like they're not fit, right? Some of them like they're 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 all it's a, it's a whole different pool of people that we now idolize. Uh, especially for the younger generation, but like before, we had Mike Tyson, we had Michael Jordan, we had Muhammad Ali. Yeah, man. But we're like they were teaching you about discipline, and and like especially like Muhammad Ali, he was like he, he would speak in proverbs almost. You yeah, know? <laughs> you know he was very extolic. So like poet. exactly. So like what we used to learn about back then versus what we learn about now is 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 changing. I think how men and what go, to look up to, yeah. what to look up to. Yeah. So I feel like yeah, women are outpacing men because I feel like men are not. Uh, are, are they're no longer at the same pace as how they used to be back then. For sure. You know what I mean? And that's how I see it because I was a, vi- a, a victim to that too. You know, I was the one who was complacent and like I, I had accepted like a very ba- like average lifestyle for myself, right? And when I say average, like the thing is, is like to become above average, it doesn't take that much. It just requires to you to go to, to the gym a little bit more often, mm-hmm. to make a little bit more money, to be a little bit more smarter, read a couple more books, because because yeah. that's what it is. Because even when we think about like the like the one percenters in the world, right? If you take the the person that makes the least in in terms of like the one percent on that chart, it's the the guy makes four hundred thousand a year. So like the minimum that you would have to make in order to become part of the one percent mm-hmm. in in America sure, sure, is sure. four hundred thousand. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Like that number is not unfathomable. It's a big number, but it it's doable. You know, and the thing about social media and stuff like that is that we've also taught women that like one percent means that the guy's making 150 million dollars a year you get what i'm saying <laughs> right, yeah right, right, right. but when the reality is one percent is is a guy that's making you know 400k it's also one percent of of the guy you're looking for like girls now are looking for men that want to be like six foot making millions of dollars right uh be this be that and be whatever but now like you're you're shorting that 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 pool mm. to less than one percent yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? But also, like, for the young guy, the average guy who's 18, 19 years old or just graduated in high school, they see all these requirements that women have. That he has to have X amount of money, all this stuff. So it's like, for them, it's like, why would they want to go to and become, I don't know, a carpenter or a mechanic yeah. when they see that the woman that they want to go after, they want the fucking guy to make half a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. you see So then it's like, I got to be an influencer. I got to be a fucking gamer because mm-hmm. that's the only way I can make that type of money realistically. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the videos that we've posted it before where it's like, oh, well, how much do you expect? Like, if you're going to do a man, yeah, yeah. how much should, should he make? And then they pause it, and then there was these two guys. I think you've seen them, that they're like, all right, I'm going to be generous. I think she's going to say 150. And then someone was like, you know what? I don't think so. Look at her eyes. She's going to say, like, at least 270. <laughs> Boom, they press play, and she's like, 550,000. They're like, <laughs> Like, what the? So it's like, bro. Like, I also think that that expectation, and then, it's almost like, who are you? And I don't want to be disrespectful just being like, oh, because, you know, they want the top 1%. But are would you consider yourself also the top 1% of women, women available? Yeah, would yeah like, what do you bring to the point. table kind of thing? Right. So I feel like, where do we find that balance? And I feel like that's where, t- to your point, where it's like, well, 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 like, is it even possible to reach that? Exactly. And, it, and I'll, I don't know if you guys seen those videos. And, I, and I'll send it to you guys. There's, have you ever seen those resurfaced, like, street interviews back in the days I that they were those. doing? You hate those? Like, Wait, back not, back then. Back, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, not yeah. the not the current ones. Yeah, the yeah, ones yeah. are like in black and gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever yeah, seen yeah, those? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this might be like, and, this, and then people in the comments are like, oh, geez, street interview. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I would be like, it, it was like sixties and stuff like that. Yeah. And they would ask the woman, oh, like, what do you got? What do you want from a, like? What do you exp- would like to see in a man? Yeah. And their 
oh, I just want a good, hardworking man, you know, who takes care of the house and yeah. this and this, and I would be a stay at home and I will be. So it's like their real their expectations and their ideas and them and, and and desires in a man. You compare those to the ones now in twenty twenty four. Bro, it's like you're on a different planet. Mm -hmm. When you listen to the, what women our age today are saying, what they want in a man versus 60 years, 70 years ago. So it's like, dude, there's a huge discrepancy, discrepancy, discrepancy between yeah. what is expected now and what was expected with our parents when they grew up. So yeah. it's like, dude, how can fucking men even compete with that? Well, social media doesn't help. That's for sure. That, oh, I will, I will detriment. Listen. I was going to chime in. Too. And also, and also, like the street interviews that they do. Like again, it's all for clicks. It's all for views, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't put the good answers that, that are out yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah, they, yeah. they they take the ones that are like the most toxic response. <laughs> right, for sure, right, you know? right, right, right. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't think that really helps. And not only that, I, I think a lot of times you'll even find uh, scripted uh, interviews. You know, where they're just like, hey, like say this, like you know, we need this or. Or like they go with their boys or someone that they know they'll pay them a hundred bucks, but like yo, I need you to do this, like do yeah. some wash. I feel like that's kind of where like the realm of social media has gone into, where you don't even find genuine. Yeah. People or they them. they kind of create the environment and make it as extreme as possible. Like if we see some of those in Brickle, they'll fucking interview people at three in the morning or two in the morning uh, in Brickle, like outside of Blue Martini, and it's like people are drunk, fucked up, <laughs> and whatnot. Sure. And then they ask them, "Oh, what do you think?" And it's like, yeah. "Is that really what the?" The, the general population also thinks so that's another thing like the algorithm gets you what we see what we get exposed to is probably a lot smaller than what we think it is yeah so it's a compilation of this. i mean the way i typically go about it too is like if you're looking for a girl and whatnot the last place that you would probably want to find her is on your phone <laughs> where are you gonna find her then you know well that's the thing i mean no. how, how do we used to find people back then you know what I mean? So uh, it's like, let, let's walk say, around. Hey, neighbor. You, you walk around. <laughs> no, yeah. or like, let's say you go to a restaurant to eat something or you go to order something and you see a honey, you're like, yeah. damn, hey, I, you know, you're really pretty. I like your number or whatever, some bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing too, is that like, <laughs> <laughs> you do that? No, no, I mean, I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, let's say for example, like we're, we're more like extroverted guys, right? Sure. So it's, it's, it comes a lot easier for us to be able to go and talk and approach women and stuff like that. But again, I always refer to the term like average because that's, that's the reality of what we live in, right? Most people are average. Yeah, right? yeah. Sure, sure. That's the term. Uh, but like a lot of guys are like, are socially awkward or like they don't have the confidence to go up and talk to a girl, right? Or, you know, there's a beauty standard for men too. Some men might not think they're like, they're good looking enough to get, you know, a, a girl who's beautiful, you know? So yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of factors that come into play for, for, for men in order to like approach girls and stuff like that. So like going on your phone and like creating a profile, whether the information is real or fake is up to like, you know, interpretation, uh. right? Um, so like, there's just like, there's like, there's like the lack of like being real, you know, like how much information can you put on your bio to like be different <laughs> from everybody else? Yeah. Right, I mean? right, right, right. So, but like, if you cross paths with someone and you have like an organic conversation, it's completely different. If you're just like cold DMing girls on, on Instagram or on hinge or whatever it is. Like I've never downloaded a, like a dating app in my life. Uh -huh. Not true. I've downloaded it. I've never created an account. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, cause I, at one point, like it piqued my curiosity, you know, maybe what if, right. But like at the end of the day, I'm like, is that really what I want? Yeah. Uh, and like, yeah, also yeah. why do I want that? Just so I could get what a quick hookup. I know. I, I don't know. I, I think originally when these dating apps first came out, I think it was to kind of bridge the gap of connecting. Man, there's people that maybe don't, aren't comfortable reaching out and with the with the era of social media and everybody on their phones it's almost like well sorry, it's another app you know mm -hmm. just i'm already on instagram which is, arguably instagram is a dating app right sure. um but now you know it's almost like well you know if we're already on there what if we create the app to s to specifically cater to those who are looking for people because maybe in person they don't have the same charisma or that confidence to go yeah. up to somebody or even women maybe maybe it, women because they expect to be walked up to which i get it traditionally which we then tie back to all these changes of like well i don't even know what we want anymore because then if a guy goes up to a girl and then immediately they're like fuck off i was right? gonna say <laughs> that's what I, that was my input on that so then like, at least now i think women are now and now in this also day and age where it's like you don't you hear all, all these people being, being kidnapped and you watch all these people fucking dying and all this bullshit. It's like you don't you want to meet up with certain people in certain mm -hmm. places or you, you see them somewhere and they're like, oh, hey, you want to come with me and over here? You know, now it's almost like, well, I want to see a little bit more. Yeah. I want to know what it is that I'm getting into. And I feel like that's originally what it was intended <laughs> for, you know, to kind of bridge that gap to make it easier to talk yeah. to people. Possibly. Um, but I also think now it just created more people to want to connect less because mm. instead of now going up to someone in person that you may find attractive that you oh, th this may be the only time i can see them you know unless I, I do something it's almost like oh okay well they're on my phone i'll i'll write to them whenever and yeah nothing will ever happen 
And I think that that's kind of like the problem of, of, I guess, what dating is. I guess the question would be now, what would be the solution? How do we solve this, I guess, disconnect? I think, um, I think we had, uh, we're going to head into like a, into the realm of like people are so like fed up with like the, the, the apps and the you virtual think so, thing. Dude, I, you haven't seen the fucking Apple Vision Pros? Like, you put that shit oh. on, you connect it to your phone. Like, imagine, there's going to be a day that we True. might have a, an episode here, but we're wearing those stupid fucking and goggles. we're like in a different country. Yeah, no, <laughs> not in a different country, but oh. I'm talking to you while I'm also like watching something over here and then I'll cast it over to you to watch the video that I'm looking at. So we're going to be talking with these fucking goggles oh, and then we're going to have a reel on this side where we're talking like... Mm -hmm. Or we could be like in a virtual like... Like you're at your place, I'm in my uh, you're at your place, and then here our avatars are talking yeah, in the same room like, type shit. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Actually. We're becoming, more, but we're also at the same no. time we're becoming more and more disconnected. There was this yeah, movie that came out I'm a saying. long time ago. I, I think I forgot what it was called, but it was a movie with Bruce Willis, right? And basically, they get into these capsules, and then they have like the, you guys have like you guys remember the game Sims? Yeah, yeah, yeah of, of course. course yeah, right? yeah. So they their their characters like will uh, live in like a, in a real world. But like y their actual physical bodies are like in this like weird capsule VR type. Really? Thing. Yeah. Oh. And then what happens is is that everything is everything is fake. So you could like you could like do drugs, you could do all these things without like, actually having an like, effect on your actual body, right? But the thing is is like when he wakes up, when he comes out of the capsule to like sleep in the real world, he comes back to like this sadder world where he's not happy with his wife. He's 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 not in shape and stuff like that. But in his VR world. He's a completely, he's a stud. He's really? built. He has Riz. He has all these things uh -huh, going for uh -huh, him, right? Uh -huh. So, like, I mean, if you fast forward, I mean, think think about where technology is now. Fast forward a thousand years and think about where technology is going to be. You're going to be around Inception, where people, like, are in a dream. And then they're, they're, if you watch the movie, obviously, some people prefer dreaming because they were living the life that they wanted to live. Yeah. So imagine this is reality and people were like, We'll give you a capsule. You go in and you can dream and you can live a life with maybe somebody who passed away or somebody. And it just feels so real. Mm -hmm. But you're not, it's not real. Well, it's not real. Wasn't that the original idea, like with the whole metaverse bullshit? And metaverse. Like now with like these vision goggles. And like I think Meta, I think uh, Facebook, Meta, whatever, they have their own shit as well. But I think yeah. it's all intended to kind of transition. For sure. Reality and to virtual reality. Yeah. Which I feel like then, have you guys seen um, Wally? The, the Disney movie, yeah. it's only, no. you know, you haven't, but you got to watch a great movie, actually. <laughs> but dude, um, it, it, it's just kind of sad because they kind of just left Earth to shit, right? And they all got sent to this like outer space capsule where everyone's just overweight. They're mm -hmm. just like all in like these little beds moving around with like their screens in, in their face. <laughs> they don't have to walk anymore. Like everything is just oh, so convenient, yeah. but it's just like, like, I, I don't know, man. Like the, the direction that where technology is taking us, it's it's disconnecting us so much more. And then, bro, I'm a conspiracy theorist. This guy judges me all the time. I, I start <laughs> thinking, like, bro, <laughs> is there the... Bro, you're, I'm only crazy until it's true. That's true. And then, th you see, this guy gets it. So it's almost like, is there, like, a systematic thing going on that's kind of forcing people to cr to be more disconnected? Yeah, for sure. So you agree. Okay, you see, this guy's not crazy. I think you're crazy. So you think... What the government is behind the... I'm not saying the government. Somebody is behind But I the do feel like... It, I don't know, man. Because just look at what happened with COVID. We were talking about COVID. We're probably going to get fucking... Do we still get b banned or whatever? We talking about this bullshit? Uh, C word. The C word, yeah. So just back then, like, think of, like, how they all, like, we were forced to do something, right? And, like, fast forward now, like, there's just a lot of things that have come up. Like, was it really necessary? Did we have to do this? Like, there's more complications with va the vaccinations that maybe we didn't think about because we just rushed it to get it all out. Like, there's just a lot of things that really didn't make sense, but we just accepted it because we were told to, right? So, you know, I is there something greater that's kind of forcing us to kind of, you know, walk the line rather than us being free and being this, I don't want to say entrepreneurial, but just being ourselves to mm. just kind of accomplish things that we want or is there something that's kind of forcing us to say, hey, stay by this line? I think I think there is, but I don't think it's like collectively, like, I don't know, an organization or the people say, oh, let's do this. Let's create social media so people are like forgetting to, I don't know, live. I think the, the, the problem in this country is people. I'm challenge you on that. Sure. Yeah, I think the problem is people, they will tell you, go to college, take out an Im immense amount of debt, get a job to pay off that debt and then buy a house and then work, and then get a new car, and then have all this depth. I think that is is the real uh, trap. The trap, yeah, the okay. systematic trap that okay. you work okay. your ass off. To, you know, you pay off. You 
leasing a, a car or whatever but that you paid off. But who's who set the trap though? The the system, like the the, the banks. Who, who who profits from us? So then that's where sitting I'll challenge in, you. sitting in because you're here saying like, oh, I don't think social media, whatever, is going to be the cause of that. But I think those people who have that power are now leveraging the resources that have been provided to them to then make it easier for them to continue with their system. So sure. if systematically they said, hey. We're going to make it so you go to school, graduate, get a job, save your money, buy a house, the car, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Be a slave for the next 80 fucking yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. I think now it's almost like, all right, well, we have social media now. So how can we leverage that to to still have people follow a similar system? Maybe not directly to that, mm. but if this is the new resource, what can we do to then kind of create that? system that they follow along but with. even if there was no social media people would still be trapped in this if anything social the social media yes they may it amplifies it because it shows you how other people are living and they have a nice car so i want to get a nice car even though it's going to fucking take me 10 years to pay this shit off and then i'll get it by a house and all like it's like sure does social media facilitate this whole thing but mm -hmm. even before social media was around there was the the the, the cage that we kind of are just programmed to to dive in, especially in America where everything's so focused on work and bills mm -hmm. and this and this. You buy a house, you think you own a house, but then you miss three payments, and then the bank will take it or you pay it off. Now you still have property taxes to pay, which will go up every year or insurances. Yeah. So it's like uh, you you never really own anything, mm -hmm. especially in this country now where everything is about like the, the the sharing and the right share and this and this. You don't need a car. You could just fucking release everything and all that stuff like that. And it's like, you don't really own anything in this country. But I don't think social media is the, the main culprit for, for the issue that we're in right now. Obviously, it could probably add to it. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, uh, I, I agree with both points. I think just to add to that, the whole thing about social media, I feel like the more you disconnect people, the more you're able to control them. And by control, I just mean by, like, you know, keeping them in the system and whatnot, right? Like, the more you do that... Like, let's say if you were to put everybody together and rally up for the same cause and whatnot, like, you would be unbeatable. Like, let's say, for example, um, I, I know it might be, like, a little bit far-fetched as an example, but when, like, when they had the French Revolution, it was at a time where, like, you hardly had any right to speak, like, what you what you thought, right? right, right. But collectively, people got together, they rose up against the system because they were fed up, right? But, like, now if you have, a, if you have like, a society where people are more and more disconnected, if people know like they don't fight for the same cause anymore there's not like that sense of like like of unity and like you know believing in the same thing like now like we we bring about a, like we talk about a topic let's say to the c word COVID, and like everybody has a bunch of different opinions now right so now you have like a bunch of these like like these subcategories of what people believe in and no one's talking the same language anymore yeah, right yeah, yeah. we're like at one point it was like fight for freedom to fight for freedom and that's it yeah right now yeah. it's like people believe in this and then that and like people kind of like pick and choose now like what their conspiracy theory is yeah. at, only because social media is feeding you information based on your algorithm and what you want to see so there's just like a whole bunch of a, like a clusterfuck of things that's happening because of social media and like now it's like okay well Who's putting the, the information out there? What's news outlets? Okay, well, are they more on the left? Or are they more on the right? What message are they trying to push? So there's just a lot of, like, so many nuances now with social media that, like, yeah. like will mess with someone. But then the, the, the alternative is no social media. Like, it's like, I feel like social media is a double-edged sword because yeah. before social media, you still had news outlets where they had their certain, like, agendas and they were owned by certain people. So yeah. it's like, either way, you would be getting information from one way or another. And at least now you have the option to do your own research. Now it's up to you to do it. But if something goes on across the world, you find out about it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the things that happened de decades ago, whether it was the Holocaust or whatever that happened, people didn't really know what was going on. Yeah. So people now are like, oh, how could this even happen? Well, there was no social media. So there was nothing, no one, there was no news outlets that, that would report like it is, or you would see videos. Now something happens, you fucking... Five minutes later, you, you see it on the internet. You know, right away, yeah. Back then, you didn't have that. So you would just have to rely on the news outlets to publish, uh, you know, the truth. But at least now, there is some way of kind of streaming accurate information, even though it's a little bit mercury, but you can find out. Yeah, you know? the only thing I don't know, I don't know, like, the history of, like, news companies and who they're owned by and stuff like that. But also, I think, like, through time, like, it's the news has become a business. Where, like, now it's no longer, like, broadcasting the news. It's who could get the most amount of views. Oh, yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's, like, yeah, yeah. what kind of clickbait banner can we put to sure. get people to tune in? And, like, what kind of information can we can, can we give? And, like, what I love, 
the most about like YouTube and content creators now is that I like that they have the freedom to do whatever they want to the point where there was this guy that invented a fake news story that the news actually took, picked up and broadcasted it to, it was like their local news station, right? But the guy made like an elaborate fake like prank. And he pranked the news essentially. What? What? what do you remember what it was? Because that sounds familiar. I don't. I, I, familiar. I, I don't know exactly what it was, but like it he was, said some bullshit, and then it was it was something, or it was like an accident, or whatever. And like they they they, they gave all this like false information to the news out the, to the media, right? And the media they and just they ran with it. Oh. Yeah. So it's like they're no longer like fact checking stuff to the degree like that That's they used to, thing. because I think before. I think because there was no like monetary incentive, I think there was a time where they were really giving you the proper information how it was at a time. But in that same in that same breath, like there was also propaganda back then too. Like, yeah. if, war, sure. like if a war leader had a specific message to want to spread, like you could easily like here's like lead here's some that. money, lead yeah. with that, you know? So I think like a lot of things changed throughout time for sure. I still th- I still think there's there's a lot of that though. I yeah. still think there's a lot of that where um, if you did want to lead and you were in a position of power, um, you could say whatever you want and they'll follow along. I mean, fuck, think of cereal. Dude. Think of the breakfast you know, that we eat. Mm. We have all these companies that have all this money dumping into this kind of um, th- these ads and all this, all this bullshit saying that, oh, yeah, this is the best thing. Oh, look how he's... Bro, didn't you send the video of the Kellogg's CEO or whatever the fuck yeah, yeah. that he was there saying like, well, you know, it's, we're in tough times. You know, things are expensive. People should just start eating cereal for dinner and, you know, right. they'll save some money. And it's like, Dude, Dude, you fucking billionaire fuck. Yeah. Are you telling me that I got to eat yeah. cereal for dinner because I can't afford food? <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, yeah. you know? So then that's kind of where, I, that's where my conspiracy theorism, I guess, comes from because it's almost like, I don't know, bro. Like, there's just like so many other resources that you're just like trying to convince us on bullshit and you want us to kind of follow along when it's almost like, I think with social media, you're, you're starting to see through that shit. My only concern is that it, it really does create a disconnect because instead of you being able to talk to other people, you're everyone's always like this. Like, look mm-hmm. at all these pictures. Like, you know, yeah, when, when you go out or you just go to a restaurant, go anywhere, everyone's gonna be like this. Yeah. There's times that I'll be on my phone and I look around and everyone around, like that I'm with, like I'll go out with yeah. them and we're all on our phones and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Well, you know, you know what I do like now about like where like our society is going. However, is like you have these guys like Elon Musk, for example, will buy Twitter, will say pretty much fuck you. <laughs> you know, will want to give back the freedom of speech to to to, to the platform. Will change the, the company's name, call it X. You know, and you also, I think, to to go to your question before, based up on what I just said, is that I think what would be like the healthy balance now is that you have more and more uh, independent journalists. Yeah. Right. That are funded by themselves and that actually want to get down to the truth of the story. You have people like, for example, um, uh, Tucker Carlson, right? And you have these people that are making their own like YouTube channels or their new um, uh, news companies or whatever you want to call it, right? Like that, yeah. And a lot of the time, like even Piers Morgan, his thing is called Uncensored, right? So they're, 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 I think there's more and more people that are trying to become more so like, here's the truth and here's how it is. Uh, mind you, everybody has their opinion, right? But At the, the end of the yeah. day. Right. But at least they're, they're not like cutting things out. It's a little bit more well-researched. I mean, the guy just got an interview with Vladimir Putin. Uh, oh, Tucker yeah, Carlson. I did see some shit like that. How yeah. many other news reporters or, you know, journalists have gotten that, you know, that capability? But from what I'm understanding is that because he's more so like an independent journalist, he was going there for a genuine interview and, you know, Vladimir knew that he wasn't mm. going to sway the conversation into one direction or the other, you know? Mm. Yeah, I, I think the fact that now you have you have anybody like even look look at us like we can talk about whatever we want yeah. theoretically and you know post it on the internet and, and yeah. have people watch it whatever it's a it's a double-edged sword because you can have some people talk crazy shit and then but all, you you kind of need that if you want to allow people to, to express themselves you got to give people the option to say what they want to say you know yeah and i think that's where you got to be careful because you could give somebody a platform but we're i've would like to say we're genuine guys. Uh, we are attention. genuine guys, but there's there also people with a bunch with of evil, crazy that folks use who, yeah. that platform for exactly. You know, and at which point it's like, okay, like, but you can't have one without the other, really, because if you can start controlling what they say and da da da, and it's now, now it's like, uh, I feel like you're doing more harm than good. You just got to give people the choice to make their own decisions of who you want to 
we would listen, listen to. to. Yeah. But that's why I think these conversations are, are, are important. That's why I like podcasts and YouTube and stuff like that, because yeah. there is no control from whoever. Yeah. You know? You're not having like a CBC coming knocking at your door, paying you guys to say yeah, certain things, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that even these conversations, even with people that don't agree with what we're saying, right? Wait, you guys are being paid by CBC or what? No, no, it's just, it's just funny. Imagine someone knocking on the door right now, like, yo. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, like, I just I just think that like these conversations are good because, like you mentioned, like people should be allowed to think on, on what they want to think. And yeah. you, they, you could pick and choose what you want. Like, not everybody has to have the same opinion. There's, in this conversation now, people might have agreed with the same thing that you said, I said, you said, and they should be allowed to construct their own uh, conclusion at the end of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess. I guess. We're all right. Oh? Yeah, uh. yeah. It's just at the end of the day, like, it's almost like shit's going to happen. You just, you just got to roll with it at the end of the day, bro. Because yeah. you really don't know what whether it's going to be true or false. Like, who, who's right at the end of the have day? Have you guys seen those videos, the open AI, where they create, the AI is creating videos? And it's so realistic. On text, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sora. Yeah, Sora. Like you put something like, oh, we're handsome guy. I saw the other handsome guy walking down the street on a rainy day or whatever, and yeah. it's just some guy like it's oh, mental. And you're like, yeah, what the fuck? And then that's that is talk crazy. about technology. Yeah, right. You put that in the hands of the wrong person, then what? Have you ever watched those, uh, what is it called, Black Mirror? And there's an episode. I have, uh, I've heard so many good things. Dude, I haven't seen. Have you gotta seen watch it. it. You have seen it? I think I know what he's going to say. Do they have that? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Every, every episode is different. Like, I have to yeah. watch some of them. Every episode is different. They have no connection to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there is some episodes where there was one that was like, the girl was living her life. And then within like a couple of minutes later or 30 minutes, an hour later, that her life was a Netflix video. Is that the one you were referring to? No, but that yeah. one is fucked up too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, we're talking right now. And then we go on Netflix in an hour and we see us oh! talking. <laughs> and yeah. you see like three people talking about everything that we said. Yeah. So it's like, that. that I, be d- I was, I, I think that's the one that I started watching. Yeah. And then I was tripped the fuck out and then I got distracted or whatever. Yeah. But something yes. would happen to her and she's like embarrassing. Salma well. Hayek was, was, yeah. was yep. I was, I was right. watching yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, she watched the TV show, and then her life was or something happened that like no one could find yes. out. Something had happened, and they yeah. were like broadcasting. They're like, "Oh my god!" Like they're gonna see it. I just had this conversation, whatever yeah, type yeah. shit. Exactly, yeah. and that is crazy as fuck. But like, it's twenty 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 four. So maybe in th- imagine in ten years how f- how fast technology is advancing. That's kind of crazy, huh? Well, the other Black Mirror episode was these two guys. They were, they were, they were two friends, right? But then they played this video game. I don't know if you saw no, it. No, I didn't see that one. So Tell let's me, say, forget, forget, I'm, I'm just close. using y'all as an example. Okay, sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So sure. let's say y'all are friends. You're playing your video game at your home, you as well. But you guys play like, I don't know, it was like the equivalent to uh, Mortal Kombat. Sure. Okay. Right? <laughs> but you guys are in VR, right? So you guys are actually in the game and like you you like, you like feel like the punches and you guys oh, okay, feel everything, yeah. right? And I'm, I'm, I'm fighting him. And you're fighting him, but in well, the game. In ch- okay, okay. Yeah, so you guys pick your character whatever, right? And obviously yeah, yeah. in these Mortal Kombat games or whatever, the, like the women are typically like robust and good looking and whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. So like all of a sudden they're fighting, right? And then like they, they get into like this awkward fucking like wrestling position and then they end up fucking. The, the, the character. characters, <laughs> but y- like in the real world, they're fucking too. Y- no, no, like y'all, y'all are you. So like, y- <laughs> you guys are, you guys are, you guys are having sex with each other in the game, right? And I'm but feeling mentally, it? You're, you're mentally, you're still you. What? So I'm feeling I'm fucking him. Yeah, or he's fucking me. <laughs> I don't know, whoever it is. But I'm no one's fucking. Yeah, but you're, at, fucking. you're you're at home. You're at home. You're connected to your VR. You're feeling everything as is. So technically, you're hooking up with your best friend, but. In the game, you're hooking up with like this hot oh, why chick. Why would you be fucking if it's Mortal Kombat? It's Black Mirror. I don't know. What the fuck? I don't <laughs> know if I want to watch that episode. Because <laughs> you can basically do whatever you want, right? But the yeah. concept is, is like you, you lose like it, okay. the distinguishment of like, you know, like on the other side of this character is your boy that's 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 at oh. home. You get what I'm oh, saying? Oh, I see what you're saying. So like, then they, 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 they see each other like face to face, like they're boys after having just done that. And they're super awkward now because like they fucked. They fucked. But, they, but they, like they in the game, really it's not. I'm not looking at Chris. I'm looking no, at like a, a, a character. Like if some but I'm feeling it. Yeah, <laughs> and you, and you guys could even be having a conversation too, like in the <laughs> game, right? So you could be like, "Yo, did you go to the gym today?" And then like five minutes yeah. later, y'all are having sex. That's crazy. I'd probably skip that episode. I don't want to watch that one. Thanks, <laughs> no. but thanks for for the suggestion. <laughs> thanks for the recap. Um, right. We're gonna have to close it out. Yeah. I do want to start to wrap it up. I did, however, um, I had this that I sent it to you the other day on Reddit. 
Oh yes, please. That's yeah, good. I would like to. Um, wait, what is this? I'm gonna get everything. Damn, wait, no, I can't find it now. The one that I had sent you, the bikini, the bikini picture one. That one. Um, disagreeing on bikini photos. Isn't that the one that I sent you? You sent me. Is that, yeah, that is the one you sent me. No, but it doesn't let me open it anymore. About like a girl posting bikini pictures. Let me see. If yeah, but I think something happened. Oh, oh, oh! I got it. I, yeah, I got it too. Okay, I'm gonna ask. Go ahead. It, it's got it's got some some good movement. So, my girlfriend and I are disagreeing on if bikini photos are a thirst trap and if posting them is okay. If I can't like another girl's bikini photo, what are your thoughts? Context. My girlfriend's cousin recently got into a big fight with her boyfriend for liking another girl's thirst trap. My girlfriend is agreeing that it was wrong. And while I didn't disagree, I brought it up that she has multiple bikini photos posted in the last few months. I have never brought up issues with the photos before. It ended up becoming an argument on if it was okay to post bikini photos if she wouldn't like me to like another girl's bikini photo. I have never liked another girl's thirst trap slash bikini photo. She is saying I am insecure, but I feel like I just want some consistency. Edit. I asked if she would want me to like the same photo, but it was, but if it was a different girl, the answer was no. So is it weird for me to not think she shouldn't be posting it then? Also, I didn't have an issue with the pictures posted, but the mindset didn't sit right with me. Am I just thinking too much into this? Edit two. I'm not trying to like other girls' bikini photos. My argument is that the photos are a thirst trap because she wouldn't want me liking the exact photo, but with a different girl in it. Then if it is a thirst trap and... And it is not okay to like thirst traps. Is it too much to expect to not post the thirst traps? I'm just looking for input on whether it is an insecure slash controlling thought or a reasonable line of thinking. So, long story short, too long, didn't read. Um, the guy's like, hey, hmm. you're telling me I can't like these girls' bikini photos, but all your shit is bikini photos. What's going on? What's fair? It's like a loaded question. Um, I think so. Let's unpack it. Well, because the thing is, like, if you're in a relationship, I understand, like, the girl is 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 posting a bikini picture and she's putting her picture out there. But I feel like also from the guy's perspective that you're going out of your way to interact with someone else's picture. You know what I'm saying? By like liking it, giving it like an approval. Or like, yeah, like you're, like you're like you're like you're saying it's like I don't listen. It's like saying I like you to a girl or like you look good to another girl while you're in a relationship. In the real world, right? Mm. Like you're you're still sending that same intent, but like on social media. You get what I'm saying? So like you're in a relationship, and as a guy, you're liking the picture, and like you want her to see that you like the that picture. You approve of it. You get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why else put the like? Right. Right. Why else do it in the first place? I understand the other argument, and like why post a picture? Like you're allowing other guys to see you, and like you're getting the validation, and guys are liking your picture, right? Yeah. But that's her posting the picture and then that's been the end of it if she were to then interact with the guys that are liking or commenting or sending dms that's when she's like going beyond just posting a picture and she's actually entertaining the guys you get what i'm saying because hmm. at the end think. of the day like even us like, let's say we put like a, like a gym picture right or something that's like a little bit thirst trappy especially we're, we're not necessarily like going to be interacting with all, we're not going to be interacting with any woman if we're in a relationship sure you know what i'm saying we're posting the picture because like we, we feel good. We like the picture and we want it. We want to share it for whatever self-validating reason we want. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I can see that because <laughs> we look, especially you, you've made some major, major, I, amazing I progress. On yeah, go so ahead, let's guys. say, you know, you go to the beach. Somebody's taking a picture. You look really good. You're going to post it because you look really good. You, you're at the beach. You're having a good time. You, it's not a thirst trap. My only thing is, is because, so I'm trying to get more into the fitness space and I, and I, and I want to bridge that gap with how we started talking of like healthy relationships starts with yourself, take mm -hmm. care of your body. So mm -hmm. I'm like this year, I made a really big like kind of shift into posting more of like what I'm eating, my health, my, my fitness, my transformation. So at that point, that's where I'm posting. Yeah. Sure. There's pictures, but it's not like I'm posting them like, Look at look fucking you know like I'm mm. not there trying to pose I'm there like dude like look at look at the before and after that's what I'm posting you know right I mean obviously you're not gonna fucking be like a you know make fucking facial expressions but you're still posting shortest picture so if Christina were to post the same thing would you say it's a thirst trap well I mean the thing is me if I, if I'm trying to create really a value system to people to show specifically with fitness that makes sense christina's a photographer yeah. she shoots pictures of weddings and she's trying to promote herself as a wedding photographer for couples why would she be posting a bikini picture but if herself? she goes but she's because if she's at the, like on if she's at the beach 
And if someone takes a picture, that's not a thirst trap. No, the but she are, no, but yeah. we live in the we live in Miami, so I get that. But if let's say for example, every single day, like she's not going to the beach, but she's posting pictures of her in bikinis every single day. Yeah, there has why? to be. I mean, I I understand I that regards, yeah, but that, that's if somebody was posting every day, I'd find that a little bit weird too. Yeah, but it's like you're not weird. even at the beach every day. You're not even at the beach this morning. Right, why are you posting a picture of you? But we're not. But that that's not the the question here. Like it's. I'm it's it's like liking versus posting, right? right? So like like basically he wants to be allowed to like the picture if his girl is posting um bikini pictures, right? Where I feel like sometimes girls will just have a cute bikini on and they they want to show it, right? And I and I, and I mean, look, at the end of the day it all stems back to like who are you dating? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if you're posting like uh like for for your like everybody posts for themselves because you get validation no matter who you are no matter what space you're in sure it, it's self-validating otherwise you just wouldn't post it at all you'd keep it to yourself it yeah. was if it was actually for yourself right um and i don't think there's anything wrong with like wanting validation from other people right like if it becomes too obsessive where you're constantly wanting yeah, yeah. validation from other people that's a different story but if you just if you're feeling confident and you you, you know you look good in your body you've been putting in some effort or you have a nice fit on you, you want to showcase it yeah. i don't think there's anything wrong once it becomes a little bit excessive if it's okay. like every day then that's when it becomes wrong and yeah I, I agree but ultimately i think the 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 moral of the story is yeah i guess if he if he's not allowed to like other girls' bikini pictures, but again, it's, it's like, should she be able to post said bikini pictures? I th- I wouldn't have a problem with my girl posting bik- bikini pictures. It's whatever happens beyond that, yeah, that would start to bother me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, because like it's it's the intent. It's why are you posting the picture? If I'm with a good girl, I, I my mind is not going to go to oh she just wants attention from men. Mm-hmm. I'm just I, I'm automatically going to assume based on the partner that I want, right, that she's just posting a picture because she she feels good, she likes what she's wearing, and she wants to showcase it. And I understand the 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 exchange that happens when you post a picture and you receive likes, you feel good about it, sure. right? So why would I want my girl to have like a little moment of of feeling good? You get what I'm saying? But if it's constantly like she feels like she has to be posting stories and posts it doesn't even have to be a bikini picture pictures in general you know what i'm saying if it's if it's becomes like too much then that's where i'll be like okay it's like is my word not enough is me calling sure, you yeah. beautiful who, not who, enough who, who are you trying to, who are you trying to signal and wave down like exactly who's intentionally trying to get so it all depends on like who you're dealing with and what the intent behind p- posting the picture is but wait hold on what about you though you didn't answer What's your opinion about uh, well? It's again. I, I think Chris made a good point where he says like, if it's like an everyday thing, yeah. And you said the same thing. Like, if my girl posts like pictures every day, bikini pictures every day, it's like, what are you trying or to like, do? Or like, what if she only posts bikini pictures? <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, unless she's a bikini not every model. Day, not every day, but let's say for example, she po- like. When was the last time you posted a picture? Uh, it's been a little bit. If anything, it would have been like maybe with a friend or something. Okay, so yeah. then let's say that every so often when you do want to post a picture, it's you shirtless. That'll be, yeah, but that'll As, be kind of weird. Right, and and I think that that's, that, I'm hoping that that's kind of what he means. Yeah. Where it's mm. the guy, where it's almost like, listen, like, I get it, but like, why are you posting it? Like, is it posting it because, oh man, you like the bikini and you were there at the beach with your friends? Or like, why is your ass showing in yeah. this picture type shit all the time yeah. now if we're on vacation and nice picture you you know beautiful whatever the fuck you want to post it of course what shit. i would post a picture too of me and, and my fucking you know uh swimwear mm-hmm. like i don't think that's anything wrong with that but again if it's like a pattern and it's like what are you trying to do here yeah um and but you made a good point where you said like oh like liking another girl's picture is different than if you're a girl and you're posting a picture because yeah. you're posting it versus I'm actively fucking liking a girl's picture. What am I trying to do here? 100%. But let me ask you this. Um, do you feel it's inappropriate for a girl who is in a relationship to wear like, um, G- like a G-string bikini or those bikinis that are very, very revealing, or that, which at this point you could be even considered fucking lingerie, yeah. you know? Have you seen those fucking Yeah, it's, it's funny. You see a girl, like if you if you catch her just in underwear, she's like, don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, dude, your bikinis oh, are smaller yeah. than that. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where it's like her whole fucking ass. It's literally just a fucking string of yeah. fucking yeah. fabric yeah. covering her asshole. Yeah. And then like the top was like fucking tits are out and whatever. What are your thoughts on well, this? Well, now it's even worse. Now it's like, it's uh, like transparent straps. Oh, I've seen, I've seen that. Transparent straps, and yeah. it's just like a little, like little cups, just like hiding it. It's yeah, like yeah, at this yeah. point, you know, it's, it's like they're wild. trying to wear yeah. those. Yeah. yeah, it's not, it's not my cup of tea. I would, it wouldn't sit, sit well with me. 
whether I'm there or not, like it's not it's not like the True. best it's not position the type of woman to be in. You would want to be. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. not, not, not at all. You look for. No, no, not at all. Like I understand, like if a bikini looks good, like you want to wear it. Yeah. I don't mind if it's like a little bit revealing, but when we start talking about disappearing bikinis, then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, put, some, put some clothes on. Why is it transparent? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 so okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so I do want to wrap it up, right? Yeah. Um, so for those who aren't aware. Um, we created a card game a um, little while ago, and basically, it, we call it, well, we call it the basics. Um, essentially, it's questions that you should probably ask early on in the relationship, and if you've been dating someone for a while, there's some questions that you, you know, there are answers to the questions that you should probably know by now, mm-hmm. if you really think that this person is, is for you. So, I put some aside, some questions. Sorry, I'm going to get behind <laughs> the scenes, go ahead. I put some questions um, aside. Some questions are very specific to relationships with you and your partner. In fact, we've played it here with our boys. Um, just kind of overall, just to really dive a little bit deeper of who they are as, as people, as their character, yeah, yeah, their, their personality. So I put some aside that I think are going to be fitting for, for um, I guess, the kind of conversations that we're having. So I'm going to take it off the top. You mind if I throw some at you? Wow, they're, they're fair. I'm it. not going to throw some bullshit at you. Um, question number one. Do you have any deal breakers? Things that would make you seriously reconsider your relationship, a relationship. Uh, yeah. Any if uh, if a girl has a, a lack of empathy. Really. Yeah, that's a deal breaker for me for sure. Why? 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 If if you're if you're not able to 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 have empathy towards like let let's say for example, I I put it in the same line if. If she talks like bad to the waiter, or mm. she like she, she she treats people based on how they, they 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 look or what their situation is, like if you're not able to empathize with someone's like situation and you're not able to like kind of like try to put yourselves in their position to try to understand where they're coming from, that that I can't do because that means you're not gonna be able to do that with me. If I'm mm. having a bad day, you're not sure. gonna be like you're gonna like keep dumping your bullshit onto mine even if I'm the one who's having a bad day. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, a lack yeah. of empathy is definitely a deal breaker for sure. What about for you, dude? I don't even know if I've asked you. We probably have. If I have any deal breakers? Yeah. Like if I wasn't like in a relationship or in general? Well, well, the question is, do you have any deal breakers? Things that would make you seriously reconsider our relationship? That's the, that's the question. Um, but uh, overall, in a, a relationship? Of course, yeah. Certainly, I do have deal breakers. Um, I think um, just being overall being compassionate, being understanding. I think it's a big one because there, in a perfect world, you know, there's it's black and white, whatever. But I don't feel like relations are perfect. And I don't think it's always going to be black and white. Sometimes there's a little bit of a gray area. And so I think and what is it? There's a thing. There's a thing called life. That right. Happens. Yeah. Life happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you have to be understanding. And, mm. and I'm very fortunate enough to be with somebody who is understanding and who can kind of empathize and kind of see it, say, hey, I know what's going on right now. So like right now I'm on a grind working X amount of days. I know my partner understands because sacrifice that we're, we're currently doing, mm. that we're going going through. So she understands, she's understanding. If I was with somebody who wasn't like that or if I started dating somebody who doesn't have those uh, qualities, yeah. that would make me seriously reconsider, I think. Mm. Yeah, dude, for me it would be uh, effort. Okay. Like, I'm yeah. big on effort, dude. Yeah. Like, I don't even give a fuck if you... If you it, well, obviously, you fuck up to a certain degree, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I think um, if you don't do something or like, like bro, bro, just fucking try, bro. Mm. Just fucking try. I think that gets you a lot further than if you just didn't. Um, and it just goes for everything. I think people, they're, they're just kind of waiting for things to fall on their lap or they're just kind of looking for something. But then there's really no like all right, action to yeah. do it. Like, you know, if you want something, you got to go after it. You got to go get it. And if and if you can't do it, like find ways to sy- put systems in place or find an opportunity. Do something, mm-hmm. you know. And I feel like if, as long as you try, whether you fail, dude, you're you're a lot further up on ach- achieving whatever it is that goal was or yeah. whatever it is that had to be done. Yeah. Then never starting at all. Mm-hmm. And that's why for me, dude, it's like effort is like the number one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I got two more. We'll do it really quick. Uh, how long do you think people should wait before having kids? What do you think is a is a, 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 a kind of I guess like a benchmark? And it doesn't really have to be like oh we've been dating for three years. Yeah. Um, it could be like a monetary, which maybe I, I would assume you would. Probably take yeah. that approach. Yeah, yeah. You think there's a monetary... Uh, like having X amount of money to... How long do you think people should wait before having kids? What do you think? You ask me first? Why not? Okay. Switch I like it up. That. I, like yeah, that. I don't, I don't like know that. either. Give you some time to... Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pick up your answer. Gather your thoughts. <laughs> so I, I feel like... I'm you out already. I think um, I, certain variables, age matters and stuff like that. But let's say for the general aspect, I think at least two years. At least two years is a good benchmark. Especially like an hour age still. You know, if I'm 20... And then... But then again, if I'm 21, 
I don't think two years is enough. But let's say for uh, you know our age, I think two years is a solid, solid uh, step. And how heavy, or how expensive everything is, I feel like I I won't, would like to say make sure your ducks are all in a roll. If you're not financially ready to have kids, I know they say, "Oh, you never be ready." All that bullshit. I understand you never actually be ready, mm -hmm. but you could be more ready. Right, so Claudia was asking me the other day. He's like, "Oh, when are we gonna start having kids?" And I'm like, uh, "Not anytime soon. <laughs> not anytime soon. Don't even give me with this bullshit." Because right now, like, the life that we're living, it's it's really focused on paying off. Our, like, we have goals that we want to yeah. achieve. And I'm like, once that is achieved financially, that are realistic. I'm not saying we have to have a fucking million bucks, mm -hmm. but let's get our debts in order. So when we do have kids, you can stay home. Like, let's plan it out. What is that gonna? What is the kid gonna look like? gonna be pregnant how if you don't feel well you might not be able to work if you don't if you're not gonna be able to work i'm gonna be, be the only one who's gonna have to work if mm -hmm. i have to only if i'm the only one who's working i have to work a lot mm -hmm. how is that gonna look like how much money can i possibly make mm -hmm. in order to sustain the both of us so mm -hmm. i like to approach it in a very logical way and so i'd say you have to at least have your debts paid off have a little bit of a safety net make sure that one per one parent could stay at home for at least the first year. Yeah, and if the numbers make sense, then yeah, you know, then you can. I think that's when you can start having kids. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? That's my my thoughts. A little yeah. bit more. What he said. Copy paste. <laughs> no, dude. No, this is what this is what I'm I'm realizing now because we don't have kids. Do you have children that you know of? No. Okay. Well, you know of. Uh, um, and uh, I'm I'm thinking this. It's if you're gonna start dating someone, I think that you should probably immediately start planning for kids. And I say that because I think that when we're older, because everyone who's older who has children, they all say, have as many kids as you can. Like, th that's like the, the purpose of life. Like, because then when you're in your deathbed or when you're older, the only people that are really going to give a fuck about anything that you've ever done are the people, like your loved ones, your family, your children, mm -hmm. right? I think that, and I'm not saying start preparing for it, like, oh, maybe we should start, you know, talk, but it's almost like, okay, we're dating. This is serious. What needs to happen? For us to have children. Okay, well, we need to pay this off. We need to do this. We need to do that. If you create a plan from the get to then have that in two years, because I had a conversation with my girlfriend the other day where she's like, listen, like, I'm concerned because, we're, like, I'm not going to work for a couple a couple months when I'm, you know, especially when I'm pregnant and when I have the children, of like, course. I need to. So I'm like, okay, well, I think what makes sense is because she's like, well, what's going to happen in the future? Like, we don't know. Like, we'll never know, mm. right? But I think if we had at least a safety net of saving a, a certain amount of money, like, yeah. maybe there's a there's a budget that we have to allocate for. That way, like an emergency fund. Yeah, So literally. when you have children, okay, well, we have that as the backup in order for us to make sure that everything will be fine. And I think that you just planning for that because if you never plan or you just say, oh, yeah, in two years, I think will be a good time to start having children. Two years comes, life happens, and you mm. don't plan for it. It's like, well, okay, we said two years. What are we doing? Yeah. It's kind of the business environment, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, okay, fuck, like, now we got we to gotta fucking get shit in order, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So and that's where I'm at right now where it's like, okay, well, what, we got to work towards something. Because working towards having children, that can mean anything. But working towards the preparation, that way when the children do come, I think that that's where you'll be in a, in a bigger position. Yeah, for But sure. I think that you should at least have at least like a two-year kind of like, okay, well, what does that look like, right? What, what do we need when we, we're going to have children? What's, what's important? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's have that in, in place. And then and we can move forward to it. Because yeah. if you never plan, then two years comes and then life happens and you don't have anything planned. Do we delay or do we just have it in the situation? And then we're kind of like, fuck. But man. yeah, a hundred percent. No, you made, you made, you making sense. But also it's, it's, you have to know, especially when you first start dating somebody, is there somebody that I can raise kids with? Because people like, they want to figure things out when the fucking baby's there. Like we, we talked about this religion, you know, school, vaccination, vaccine, like, like all those things that you, people, no one really thinks about until it kind of happens. Like there are certain things you can compromise on a lot of things. You should compromise, have to compromise, mm -hmm. but there's certain core things that you cannot mm -hmm. compromise. And if, if you look at somebody and you say, well, I wouldn't want my kids to be like this, then why the fuck are you going to have a kid with this person? Yeah. So that's the first step. Cause if I can't see you being the, the mother of my children, then I'm, this relationship is, is fruitless. And so, and vice versa. Like, if you're a woman and you feel like, would you want your son to be like your partner, like your husband, like your your man? Yeah. And if the answer is no, then what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. All the planning in the world is not gonna fucking get you there. Um. But but yeah, great great feedback. Great, great Amazing. Response. Yeah. So I I kind of don't want to run out of time because I feel like the camera is probably gonna start. Yeah. yeah. So with us, it's we're shooting very high resolution, but we're now in forty minutes. Camera's gonna cut up. Yeah. It's the overheat. So, so with that being said, it is time to break up, Sergio. Yes. Not you. 
it does. So yeah. you know, things I'm, happen. I'm, I'm used to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the worst breakup. <laughs> no, so with that being said, we usually like to end with a final thought. So that kind of final thoughts could be anything that you'd like to say, say to your younger self or maybe a, a message that you're really passionate about that you just want to share with the world. We're going to have you do that. Say whatever you want to say and then Not where they yourself. can find you. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I think people should just, you know, since they've made it to the end of this episode, just take the time to call someone, tell them that you love them. Damn. Simple as is. I mean, you know, when's the last time you spoke to your brother, your sibling, your best friend, your mother, your father? Have a conversation with them. Mm. Ask them what's up. Ask them how they're doing, you know? Like uh, that. And that's pretty much it. I like that. That's actually, damn. That's pretty good, actually. That's actually, like that. we'll clip that one. I think yeah, that's yeah. important. We'll, we'll make, it, we'll make okay. it a point. But now, um, so where can they find you? Any last little tidbits? Uh, yeah. Sergio Talks for my personal Sergio Talks podcast for the podcast itself. And then also you guys can follow my, uh, my, my co-host too and now my uh, ex friends because <laughs> <laughs> we broke up <laughs> this I guy like this guy like with that Quick being said yeah thank you very much everybody see you guys much, adios thank you guys ciao, ciao.